Hey everyone, and welcome to Skillcap's guide on the must-have add-ons for WoW PvP. In this guide, we'll be walking you through the perfect setup of all the most important add-ons in PvP to ensure you can quickly and easily gather all of the information you need to make the correct decisions in your games, just like the pros do. And these add-ons are not just our recommendation. Over the years, they've proven to be a tried and true part of almost every top player's kit and play a major role in their decision-making in competitive arenas. And much like our pro settings guide, we guarantee you'll find some hidden gems in this guide you haven't heard of before to really take your game to the next level. Also, if you guys are interested in downloading our add-on pack, which includes all of the add-ons we cover in this guide, you'll find it on our Discord channel, which you can join by clicking on the link in the description. Now, we here at Skillcapped release plenty of premium content every week to keep you up to date with the meta and make you a better player. So, if you want to improve at WoW and take your game to the next level, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified the moment we release more premium guides just like this one. Also, you guys did a great job getting our pro settings guide to 5k likes. So, if you're even more excited for this one, how about we try to get it to 5k likes too? Alright, let's get into it. The first set of add-ons we're gonna look at are all about increasing your awareness in Arena and are arguably the three most important add-ons. That is, if you could only play with three add-ons, it would be these three. All together, Gladius or S Arena, Big Debuffs, and Omnibar bring to you much of what you need to know to stay on top of what's happening in your arenas. It goes without saying that Arena frames are an extremely important element of your user interface when playing Arenas. Not only do they provide the health, mana, and cast bars of your opponents, but you're also able to see what PvP Trinkets players on the enemy team are using, along with its cooldown. And although this is all part of the default UI, you'll notice that without making any changes, the arena frames you get out of the box are scaled way too small and are not positioned well. For those of you who already watched our pro settings guide, you'll know that you should be positioning your arena frames closer to your central field of view, and picking up Gladius or S Arena is the easiest way to do this. Now, although this can be achieved with a simple script, by picking up an arena frame add-on, you also benefit from a handful of additional features that are not part of the default user interface. First and foremost, having access to diminishing returns is one of, if not the most important addition you can make to your interface for competitive arena. Without having this information available to you, you'll find yourself time and time again making poor plays by mistiming your crowd control and using stuns or other CC for less than its full duration by mistake. It's worth noting that there's actually an add-on you can use for just getting a diminishing return tracker on all of your frames, but that's something we'll go over later. For now, we recommend just sticking to an arena frame add-on for its ease of use, as everything is packaged together. And on top of tracking DRs, using Gladius or S Arena also lets you easily track dispels, and using a modified version of S Arena lets you track racials, both of which are extremely important tools that help you make good plays. First, knowing when dispels are on cooldown gives you more control over the game, as you'll be able to put players into crowd control that the enemy team won't be able to dispel. For example, a paladin seeing the healer's dispel on cooldown can use Hammer of Justice without the risk of it being dispelled. As for tracking ratios, there are several which you can benefit from tracking, but the most important one is will to survive on humans. You'll often find yourself facing humans that play with a relentless trinket, and without using an add-on, you won't be able to track when their human ratio is on cooldown. By knowing whether or not Will to Survive is on cooldown, you'll know if you can freely go for crowd control without the risk of them breaking out of a stun and using Shadow Word Death to break your CC. Last up, we have one more key feature of Arena Frame add-ons, which is the ability to see important buffs and debuffs over the class icon. This is an incredibly effective tool that helps you quickly notice what important buffs or debuffs are up on the enemy team, and this can help assist you in multiple ways, such as helping you time your crowd control, knowing when to play around defensive cooldowns, or when to stop a healer from drinking. And while both Gladius and S Arena have this feature built in, you'll need to open up and edit their LUA files, which have spells listed in order to customize which spells are displayed. This is something we'll go into more detail in a future guide dedicated to just Gladius and S Arena. For now though, it's just important to understand the ways in which you can benefit from having an Arena Frame add-on. The next add-on we're gonna cover, Big Debuffs, does actually bring the feature of displaying important buffs and debuffs to the default Arena Frames. 
However, you'll also need to edit an LUA file in order to change which spells are displayed. Besides, having this feature separate and part of your arena frames lets you have different priorities in which abilities are displayed. But again, we'll go into this in further detail in a future video. Before we get into big debuffs, you should decide which of Gladius and S Arena you want to use. Honestly, this really does come down to personal preference, and you'll be hard-pressed to find one being used more than the other by the majority of top players. So we recommend picking up whichever you prefer. If you're looking for some pros and cons of either add-on though, we'd say that the diminishing returns and the buffs and debuffs displayed over the class icons are clearer on Gladius, whereas S Arena has much clearer cast bars. Once you've decided which one to use, there isn't too much you'll need to do to actually set them up. With Gladius, it works straight out of the box, and all you need to do is position it. S Arena though offers better customization, given that each feature is a lot more modular. You've got a handful of preset layouts you can choose from. All you need to do is scale and move things around to whatever feels comfortable for you. If you're looking for a good starting point though, here's a few ways we suggest setting up your S Arena. First, if you're using the Blizzard Arena layout, you'll definitely want to scale things up. You can then take things a step further and emulate the layout of Gladius within S Arena if you want. You'll do this by mirroring the frames, moving the spec icon over to the class icon's new position, moving the trinket icon over to the right, and then adjusting the scale and precise positioning of everything to whatever your preference is. Alternatively, the Zaryu layout is an excellent option that completely recreates the Gladius layout. All you need to do is move the ratios and dispels over to the right. You can then choose to move the cast bars over to the left, but that's up to personal preference. And the final thing to do is position your S Arena correctly. Before we move on to the next add-on, there's one more thing you might want to change regardless of which arena frame add-on you're using. If you want, you can limit the number of DRs you track just to clean up your UI a little. For example, classes without a root might not want to track root DRs and so on. We'll leave this one up to you. Although we do recommend keeping fear, poly, and stun DRs up no matter what, as you'll usually be playing with classes that have these DRs even if you don't have them yourself and being able to track them lets you know when your team can set up CC on the opposing team. Having DRs available to you is a huge part of being able to shot call and lead your team to victory in setup based comps and is something we'll be covering in a future guide. Let's now take a look at big debuffs. As we've already touched on, and as the name suggests, this add-on makes it much easier to see buffs and debuffs by having them appear on both portraits and nameplates while also increasing their size on your raid frames. There isn't too much to say here, other than once you start playing with this add-on, you'll never want to play without it again. It really makes it so much easier to see what's going on, and as a result, it helps improve your gameplay by increasing your awareness and helping you make the right decisions. For example, you have a much easier time seeing exactly when your healer has been crowd controlled and so you can react accordingly either by trading a defensive or simply repositioning. The key thing here is that your reaction time will be improved as you'll likely notice debuffs on your team much faster than if you were not using big debuffs. You'll also have a much easier time seeing the exact duration of crowd control on your target and focus target which can help with perfectly timing follow up CC. Much like Gladius, big debuffs is pretty much good to go straight out of the box. There's only a handful of settings you'll need to change. The most important is to increase the max number of debuffs. You've then got a few options you can play around with to give you as much or as little information as you prefer. This includes the choice between hide other debuffs and redirect other debuffs, the option to increase maximum buffs to 6, the scaling of different debuff types, the warning debuffs you want enabled, and you can even anchor your debuffs to either the left or right side of your frame. Although keep in mind that being able to anchor your debuffs outside of your raid frames is entirely dependent on how you've set up the rest of your user interface, including where you position an optional add-on we're gonna cover later, which usually sits on the left-hand side of your raid frames. With all of that being said, you'll be fine with just increasing the max number of debuffs and leaving everything else as default. The only other setting you might want to change is in the unit frame settings, where you can disable big debuffs on arena frames, as we'll be letting Gladius or S Arena take care of this. The last add-on we're going to look at in this section is arguably the most important one of all, Omnibar. 
Much like the other important add-ons we're covering in this guide, we're gonna have a video dedicated to just the intricacies of Omnibar. For now, we'll briefly touch on why this add-on is so highly regarded, and walk you through a few quick tips for setting it up. When you first log in with Omnibar, you'll be greeted with a single bar that, by default, only tracks interrupts. Tracking interrupts alone is what the grandfather of Omnibar, initially called Interrupt Bar, was created for. We have since been bestowed with a much more advanced version of this add-on that can be used to orchestrate entire game plans if used to track the right abilities. First, tracking interrupts is obviously one of the most powerful things you can do, as it allows you to know when you've successfully faked potential interrupts. It can even be used to help your team set up crowd control. For example, you can stun the target that has an interrupt ready to cover them while your teammate casts their CC. By also tracking offensive cooldowns, you and your team will have a much easier time handling offensive pressure from the enemy team, as you'll be able to react faster and also plan ahead for dealing with these cooldowns. This is illustrated quite well here. As the moment Warbreaker is used, we see it pop up on Omnibar, and this arm is then used to completely negate the incoming damage from the opposing warrior. The same goes for tracking defensive cooldowns, as knowing when abilities like Bark skin already can help you play aggressive at the right time to set up kills. Tracking some forms of crowd control is another way to help guide you in an arena, as you'll be able to play around them to try to avoid CC. For example, being mindful of your positioning when you know leg sweep is ready in order to avoid it, or being ready to counter an incoming stun such as lightning lasso with your own utility like spell reflection. This can be taken even further by tracking utility-based spells such as shadow word death, which can assist you in landing your own crowd control. Altogether, it should be clear just how powerful Omnibar is and that you absolutely should be playing with it. When it comes to setting it up, we'll have a more in-depth guide on doing so, but for now, we recommend center locking the default bar that tracks interrupts and positioning it just above your cast bar. You should then create a second bar for tracking important spells which you can position just above the interrupt bar. We'll have a list of abilities that we recommend you track listed in the description, but bear in mind this is just a suggestion, and some classes may want to track more or less abilities. And if you're new to using Omnibar, we suggest starting off with tracking as little as possible, and as you get comfortable with using it and are actually making use of the information it's giving you, you can then start to add more abilities. Also, if you want a slightly more advanced method for setting up Omnibar, you can create multiple bars to track different types of abilities. For example, one to track offensives, another to track stunts, and many more. You can even set some of these bars to always show the abilities on the team you're facing. Just make sure to also check as enemies appear so they only show up when you're facing those classes. For example, if you wanted to always see what stunts you need to look out for and you're facing an elemental shaman, lightning lasso will always be visible. The last thing to mention is if you ever find an ability not tracking properly on Omnibar or you simply want to track something that isn't already there, such as any PvE trinkets that might be overpowered in Shadowlands, all you have to do is get the spell ID from Wowhead and add a custom spell like this. If it's an actual spell, you'll need to add it to the right class and spec and enable it. But if it's a trinket, you can just add it to any class, like Rogue, and it'll show up no matter what class is using it. Alright, that concludes this section on the three most important add-ons you should be using to increase your awareness in Arena. As we've already mentioned a few times, each of these add-ons will have their own dedicated videos that take a deeper dive into the specific settings and customizations that you can use to take these add-ons even further. If that sounds like something you're interested in, now would be a great time to drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Next, we're gonna take a look at a couple add-ons that can be used to increase your own awareness of your team. While we absolutely believe that picking up Gladius or S Arena, big debuffs, and Omnibar is mandatory, the add-ons we're gonna cover in this section are optional, and so you shouldn't feel pressured into using them. Still though, they're excellent tools for improving your awareness and giving you more information to help with decision making. First, we have Arena Arena Team Tracker. This add-on is especially useful for those of you who play without voice comps, usually when doing twos. It acts in a similar way to Omnibar, except instead of showing the cooldown of the opposing team's spells, it shows you some of your team's most important cooldowns. Some use cases for this are knowing when your healer's trinket is on cooldown, which will help you decide on how to react to your healer being put in crowd control. 
You will also know when personal defensive cooldowns are available. For example, if your holy paladin is under pressure but you want to go for a kill, you will know what the right decision is just by glancing over to your arena team tracker to find out if their divine shield is available or not. It's also great for tracking your teammate's crowd control, as it will help you determine when you can go for a CC chain. For example, if your priest has psychic scream ready, you will know it's a prime situation to set up a kill with your own CC. And the benefits of this add-on aren't just limited to no voice twos, it's great for threes too. Let's say you're playing a melee cleave. With this add-on, you'll know if your melee teammate's interrupt is ready, which helps you avoid overlapping your own interrupt with your teammates. Overall, it's just an extremely solid add-on that we recommend picking up and using to once again help you improve your decision making. And while this is yet another add-on that we'll have a follow-up in-depth guide for, we'll still get you started with the right settings now. When logging in with this add-on for the first time, you'll be greeted with several cooldowns in the middle of your screen. Start by typing slash ATT to get into the arena team tracker settings. Now, remember when we said you might not want to have big debuffs anchored to the left of your raid frames? That's because we suggest putting Arena Team Tracker there. In order to do this, you'll need to attach it to your raid frames by clicking on this drop down and selecting Auto Select. You should then click on Grow Left and Hide Anchor. After that, we recommend enabling Racials. Then go into Trinkets and enable Gladiator's Medallion. You can then scale the icons to whatever feels comfortable for you, and even use two rows if you prefer. If you're a new player and are not sure what cooldowns other classes have, you can enable Show Tooltip which will allow you to mouse over your teammates' cooldowns to find out what they have. We also recommend disabling Show Self, just to avoid cluttering your UI with too much unnecessary information, given that your cooldowns should all be clearly visible in your action bar, which by the way is something we'll be covering in an upcoming video on keybinding. Dampening is a bonus feature of this add-on we suggest you enable, as it shows you the percentage healing decrease that's currently active during dampening. The last thing you might want to consider doing is customizing which spells are shown, as initially Arena Team Tracker might show you cooldowns that you're not interested in tracking. So feel free to go through each class and disable the cooldowns you don't want to track. However, things like major defensive cooldowns, important crowd control that you can play around, and interrupts are a great starting point to keep enabled. The next add-on we're going to look at that helps with team awareness is Jack's Party Cast Bars. This add-on does pretty much exactly what it says and provides you with cast bars for your party members. While this one hasn't really been popularized by the masses at the top level yet, it's certainly one to keep in mind as the benefits of using it help with streamlining your gameplay and once again helps with decision making in crucial moments. For example, have you ever failed to cross CC at the right time because you didn't know when your teammate's cast was going to finish? Well, that problem would have been avoided if you were using this party cast bar add-on to know exactly what your teammates are casting and when. As far as setup goes, there isn't really much to it. All you need to do is scale and position it as you see fit. We've seen most players position it inside their raid frames, but it can also be moved just to the side of them, so feel free to go with whatever works best for you. If you've stuck with us this far, great job! You're definitely going to be well on your way to vastly improving your awareness in Arena by adding to your knowledge of both the opposing team and your own. This next set of add-ons offers some additional tools you can use to help increase your awareness on what's happening to you. If you recall, when we looked at Arena Frame add-ons, we mentioned that you could pick up an add-on solely dedicated to adding diminishing returns to your default frames. Well, despite the fact that your Arena add-on of choice will be providing you with this feature, we still suggest picking up the add-on Diminish, not for tracking the DR of your opponents but actually to track your own personal DR. By having your own DRs displayed, you'll be able to know the windows in which you can freely move around without the risk of being CC'd at the wrong time in the wrong place. For example, warriors might want to spend more time sitting in battle stance when they're already on stun DR, and healers won't need to worry about tanking a full polymorph while they're on DR and can use this time to push in and play offensive. This is an extremely underrated tool you can make use of, and once you get used to tracking your own personal DR, you'll find certain matchups become much easier to play. This is especially true as a healer. Once you start playing with it, you'll wonder why you weren't using it before. To set this one up, all you need to do is disable it for the frames you don't want to track. So focus, target, and arena, as these are all tracked through your arena frame add-on. You can then feel free to customize the size and location of your own DRs. However, the default location works just fine too. The next add-on we're going to take a look at is a favorite for PvEers, and that's weak auras. While there's a lot of crazy stuff you can do with this add-on, we mostly recommend PvPers pick this one up to help them track important buffs. 
These are categorized in three different ways. The first would be to simply track missing buffs that you always need to apply, such as rogues with poisons, warriors with battle shout, mages with arcane intellect, and many more. The second is the duration of any important buffs that impact your gameplay. A great example of this would be a holy paladin having a weak aura for their divine favor to let them instantly notice if it gets purged during their cast, so they can fake cast and avoid a potential interrupt. And the third type of ability you might want to track are procs. While Blizzard's default UI does a great job of tracking most procs, there are some procs which aren't tracked that you might want to have, such as a Red Paladin tracking Empyrean Power or any class tracking a Trinket proc. Now while our pro settings guide had you reposition your buff frame to make it easier to see your buffs and debuffs, there's no denying that having weak auras for the most important buffs you want to track is much easier than having to look at your buff frame to see when a specific buff is up. As for setting weak auras up to track a buff like Defensive Stance, all you need to do is create a new aura click on icon, set the name, go to trigger, and select name where you can then type in the name of the buff you want to track. And if you're trying to track a missing buff such as a warrior's battle shout, change show on to auras missing. We then suggest customizing when the aura loads to make sure it only loads on the right class by going to load, selecting player class, and then using the drop down menu to choose the right class. The last thing you'll want to do is position and scale the weak aura to whatever you prefer. We generally suggest keeping missing buffs somewhere obvious such as over your character. And tracking the uptime of your other buffs can just be positioned wherever you can easily see them mid game. The last add-on we're going to cover for increasing your gameplay awareness is called Combat. This add-on simply adds an icon next to your target and focus frame to indicate whether or not those players are in combat. While you may be thinking only rogues should be using this add-on, it's actually a great tool for knowing when healers have dropped out of combat and are able to start drinking. There's not too much to say about this one other than it's good to pick up and there's no reason not to have it. But if you do play a rogue and you don't already have this add-on, you're honestly shooting yourself in the foot. It's an incredible tool for helping you make plays and go for a mid-game sap whenever the opportunity presents itself. With this combat add-on, you'll never have to waste a vanish, meld, or dance again to land a sap on a target that didn't drop combat. Rogues, you can thank us later. Next, we're gonna take a look at an extremely underrated add-on for improving at PvP. Details is probably one of the most effective tools players can use to identify what they're doing wrong and why they might be losing games. First and foremost, whenever you face the same spec you're playing in an arena, you get the opportunity to compare your damage breakdown against theirs. This will help you quickly figure out what you might be doing wrong with your rotation. For example, if you're playing an arms warrior and you lose to an enemy arms warrior while getting out damaged, you'll be able to look at details and see why this happened. Perhaps they doubled your mortal strike count, or maybe they had much higher rend uptime. Whatever it is, you can use details to figure out why you're doing more or less damage than other players, and use that information to improve on your future games. The same can be applied to interrupts. Details tracks the number of interrupts both teams land and what they were used to interrupt. So if you find yourself landing way less interrupts than the opposing team, you'll know that's probably something you need to work on. This can be taken even further by looking at exactly what you're interrupting. For example, are you just interrupting Mind Flay against a Shadow Priest instead of stopping Vampiric Touch? Or are you just kicking Frost against a Mage and never stopping important Polymorphs? Honestly, Details has got to be one of the most underrated tools for self-improvement in Arena, and we highly suggest you start using it in that way. Last up, we've got a couple of our personal favorites just for some quality of life changes. Safe queue removes the leave queue button and displays how long is left on the queue before it drops to help you not miss any games. And favorites adds class color coding to your friends list to help you quickly see what class your friends are logged on. It can even be customized to also color code factions. Before we wrap this video up, we'd just like to remind you of our best pro settings guide which we highly recommend you check out if you haven't already done so. In that guide, we show you exactly how to set up your default interface like the pros and also walk you through setting up the add-on Leatrix Plus, along with a script for sorting your party order. 
We also saw a few comments of people asking how to darken your UI like the one featured in our pro settings guide. So we've put that onto our add-on pack along with every other add-on we've covered so far in both videos. And again, the link to join our Discord server and get that add-on packed is linked in the description. Alright, that concludes the second part in our series of guides dedicated to getting you prepared for PvP in Shadowlands. Next, we'll be taking on movement and keybinds to help you figure out the secrets and common themes that pros use to perfectly control their characters and gain an edge over their opponents. And guys, we here at Skillcapped put a ton of work into guides like these to make sure we provide you with the most up-to-date and accurate information you won't find anywhere else. So if you'd like to support the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified the moment we release more premium guides. That's all for this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.